Here's our next problem. An object has an initial velocity of positive 7 meters per second. It has a constant acceleration, which is causing it to slow down. The object reverses direction after moving positive 15 meters. Find its acceleration. An object has an initial velocity of positive 7 meters per second. It has a constant acceleration, which is causing it to slow down. The object reverses direction after moving 15 meters, positive 15 meters, find its acceleration. Copy this into your notes, make sure you're copying it accurately, uh, and then try to solve the problem using our systematic notation and systematic techniques. So, pause the video now, please. Okay, remember step one is to draw the path. Now, this is a problem, uh, well, let's start by thinking about, um, let's see, we have an initial velocity of plus seven. Now, they didn't tell us what direction was the positive direction, so we can choose our own. So let's say that um, moving to the right is our positive direction. So we'll choose to the right to be our positive x direction. So the object is moving to the right, um, but we know that it's slowing down. Um, so let's say a little bit about our velocity and our acceleration here. Well, we're moving to the right. Remember, the velocity tells you which way you're moving. Since we're moving to the right, the velocity is to the right. Uh, but we're slowing down, which means the acceleration is to the left. Remember, the acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving. We're moving to the right, but that doesn't mean the acceleration is to the right. The acceleration just tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. And here's how it does it. If you're speeding up, the acceleration should be pointing in the same direction as the velocity. But if you're slowing down, the acceleration should be pointing opposite to the velocity. Well, since we decided to imagine that the velocity was to the right, and since the problem told us we're slowing down, we're forced to write the acceleration to the left. Okay, so uh, we're moving to the right, but we know that we're moving to the right slower and slower and slower. Um, and then they told us that eventually the object reverses direction. Um, well, that shouldn't really surprise us um, very much. If we're moving to the right, but we're going slower and slower and slower, eventually there's going to come a point where we're motionless for a second, and then we start moving to the left. Uh, so, of course, the acceleration doesn't tell you what direction you're moving, but if we continue to accelerate to the left for long enough, then eventually we are going to have to start moving to the left. So originally we were moving to the right, but since we're accelerating to the left, um, we're going to be moving to the right with less and less speed until eventually for an instant we're motionless, and then if we continue to accelerate to the left, eventually we're going to start moving to the left. So the object's motion looks like this, moving to the right, but slower and slower and slower, and then moving back to the left faster and faster and faster. So here we can draw the complete path of the object. It starts over here, it's moving to the right, but slower and slower, for an instant it's motionless, and then it starts moving to the left. Um, so there's really two different portions of the path. In this portion of the path, now the velocity is to the left. Remember that the velocity indicates which way you're moving. Well, originally we were moving to the right, but eventually we're going to have to start moving to the left. So the velocity is to the left here. And how about the acceleration? Well, remember they told us we have constant acceleration. The acceleration can't change. It's constant. Otherwise, we couldn't treat this like a kinematics problem. Remember, kinematics means constant acceleration. So um, the acceleration is to the left in both of these portions. And so eventually the acceleration um, uh, drags the velocity to point in the same direction. So now we're moving in this direction. Remember again that really we'd be moving back along the same path that we went out on. So we'd move to the right along this path, and then eventually we'd start moving to the left along the same path. The only reason I'm writing the, the leftward path down here is so that it um, isn't obscured by the rightward path. But really, we're moving along the same path in both directions. Alright, so it takes a little thought to work out um, our positions here. Now remember uh, something I mentioned early on, but maybe I haven't emphasized enough, is that you need to draw dots for the initial and final positions. And this is a problem where you might be a little bit confused as to what the initial and the final positions are. Well, here's a trick. 
Um, if you're given a number for the displacement, that really tells you what the initial and final positions are. So here they told us um, that eventually we um, had a displacement of positive 15 meters. Well, between what two points are the positive 15 meters, I think it's clear This is the positive 15 distance. Remember that this is the point at which we started reversing direction. We reverse direction after we've gone 15 meters, and then we start going in the opposite direction. So here's our positive 15 meters. Um, well, then the initial point must be where the 15 meters starts, and the final point must be where the 15 meters ends. So if you're having any trouble identifying where the initial and the final positions are, just ask yourself, um, well, what does the displacement represent? What's the point at the beginning of the displacement, and what's the point at the end of the displacement? The point at the beginning of the displacement must be the initial point, and the point at the end of the displacement must be the final point. And uh, remember that these two dots represent the same point, really. Um, they just, this dot just represents us the instant after we finish moving to the right, and this is the same um, point when we start moving to the left. But really, we're moving backwards and forwards along the same path. Okay, so here's our initial and final positions. Okay, so in this case, um, we had to be a little bit careful about drawing the initial and final positions. And I've shown here that after we reverse direction, we're just going to keep on moving to the left forever. But we don't really care about this portion of the path because um, this is going to be the final position we use when we're solving the kinematics. All right, um, then we have to choose a positive direction. We've actually already done that. We've already chosen to the right as our positive direction here. Um, because this is still one-dimensional motion, there's no real step three. We don't have to break things into components. So it's on to step four. Let's write down the kinematics variables. Here's our kinematics variables. Now we read the problem carefully and try to write down our numbers and our question. An object has an initial velocity of positive 7 meters. So that was clearly the initial velocity. And we would never write down uh, a velocity without a sign. It is slowing down with constant acceleration. But they didn't tell us what the acceleration is. The object reverses direction after moving positive 15 meters. That was our displacement. And we're going to include the positive sign. All right. And there was actually some hidden information there. The object reverses direction. Now, do you remember that we talked earlier in these videos about what happens when you reverse direction? Remember we explained that the instant that you reverse direction, in that instant, your velocity is zero. In the instant that you reverse your direction, your velocity is zero. So that's telling us that the velocity at this point is zero. But remember, we already decided this was going to be our final point. Because it's at the end of the 15 meter displacement. The 15 meter displacement tells us where the initial and the final points were. Well, the final point is at the end of the 15 meters, but, that's where we're, that, but that is where we are reversing direction. So the final velocity must be zero. All right, so this, that's the trickiest part of this problem, I'm sure, for most people, this hidden information that the final velocity was zero. But that should really jump out at us when we see the phrase reversing direction. Again, the instant that you reverse your direction, um, your velocity in that instant is going to be zero. In the instant that you reverse your direction, in that instant your velocity is going to be zero. Okay, uh, again, uh, so that gives us our final velocity. Again, we knew that the final position was at the end of the 15 meters. We used the displacement to identify the initial and final positions. The initial position was when we began moving across the 15 meters, and the final point was when we ended traveling the 15 meters. Um, and we know that the 15 meters is uh, exactly when we reverse direction. So at this final point, we're reversing direction and the velocity is zero. So that's really, I think, the tricky part of this problem. All right, and then finally, they ask you to find the acceleration. We always put in the question mark. I hope that you've definitely made the habit now of putting in the question mark for the question. All right, how do we know when we're ready for step five, which is picking an equation? We're ready when we know three numbers. Well, now we know three numbers. Um, so incidentally, what would have happened if you had not realized that this velocity was zero? Well, if you hadn't realized that the final velocity was zero, you would be stuck with just two numbers. And then you would know you're missing something. Remember, we can't go on until we've got three numbers. So the problem has got to give us three numbers. Um, so if we've only got two numbers so far, we know we just have to keep rereading more carefully and looking for hidden information until we have our third number. 
All right, so now let's pick the equation that's missing time. We want to pick the equation that doesn't include time. That's the one variable we don't care about here. Here's the equation that doesn't include time. Now we're going to start plugging in. 